Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry. I'm so thrilled to be with you doing a new lesson. And these new lessons are gonna be so much fun. We're gonna give you a chance to get the kits beforehand if you wish to, and you can paint along with me. Or you can order the kits now and just watch this over. So this lesson's free, just for you, but I have the sets that you can pick up and I'm excited to see how you like this because we might do more. And I would love to do ones for children. So we have a, could have like a little summer camp or a summer at home. Or if you're homeschooling, you're gonna love that because you're gonna have an art lesson. All right, so what we're doing today is a multimedia. So we're layering different um, elements of art on top of each other. And we're gonna use a stencil. So I think that would be kind of fun. And we're gonna use a 12 by 12 canvas. All right, so you can do a wrap canvas or flat panel. This is a flat panel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some one stroke with this, but we're also gonna teach you a little bit about stenciling, about base coating, and make it really easy for you. If you've never painted with me before, I think you're gonna like it, okay? So we're gonna use our sponges, and I'm gonna put a light coat. So now what I'm gonna do is I dampen my sponge first. So can you see, we put it in here and we squeeze out all the paint, I mean all the water. Excuse me. And then we're going to pick up our paint. And this is a light blue that we're using. And we're going to make circles because it is um, a tech canvas is textured. And what's going to happen is we want to get it into the canvas itself. All right. So I'm in my studio today. And so you can hear the highway outside. <laughs> you might hear some horns. And we have CrossFit across the across the street here, so they're really out sometimes. All right, so I don't care if it's perfectly one shade, but if we put it right here, hopefully you can see it well, okay? Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna let this dry, and I want you to see the stencil that we're using, okay? Now, what I love about this stencil is that it has two birds on it and the butterfly. And what you're gonna see when we do our project is that we paint one of the birds right over the stencil. So it makes it really nice, all right? Let me lay this out. I like it to be black so y'all can see it really well. There you go, okay? So we're gonna paint right over one of the birds. One bird's gonna stay a stencil. That's gonna give you that illusion of what's in the back and what's in the front. And like there's multi different layers of design. And the butterfly, you can leave it, but I painted on mine. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. We're gonna let this dry for a few minutes. And while it's drying, what I'm gonna do is I wanna talk to you about our paints. So let's look over here at our paints. So now what we've used is, a, what we're gonna use is a multi-surface paint. Now you know what you're gonna love about this multi-surface paint. It replaces like outdoor glass paint. I paint right on paper with it. I paint on metal, glass, ceramic. Um, any of the wood and canvas that you paint, and I paint on my walls with it. So I think you're gonna like that part of it. And it has all the beautiful rich colors. Now, the colors sometimes will say thicket because it is thicket or magenta. And then some of the others are different colors. Like this one is, um, what is that? Oh, ink spot. I saw the different languages. Okay, I was a little confused. All right, so you have all these different colors so there's 72, so we have metallic and glitter and all sorts of different ones. Now, when you see glitter, you can know that that glitter can go on glass too, so that's awesome. Outdoors also. We're gonna come over here, we're gonna use medium, and here's a large bottle of medium. I like to get large bottles because they're always, we're always short on medium. So that's something that we're gonna use on most of any of our painting. You don't use this medium on glass though, okay? So one little hand I wanna tell you, if you're doing enamels and you go and pick up um, this paint, and for one of the colors you might be messing, you can mix it with enamel without any problem, okay? So now I'm gonna look at the brushes here. These are my professional brushes. I have my green brushes like I've always had, okay? And these are good brushes, but these are professional brushes. If you wanna do professional art and you want the best chisel and the best bristles, I would use my dark handle brushes. And they're called the Pro Brushes. I have a 13 piece brush set, so you ought to check that out. It's the 13 most used brushes by me. But I'm gonna use these four brushes today while I'm working. And I have every other kind of brush that I have in there ready for you too. We're gonna use our double loader. 
Okay, now with the double loader, what I've done is I put all my colors that I need. And in the double loader, I put this press and seal. It's a kitchen wrap. And I put it in there and I use my scruffy brush to work this in. Okay, and then I put it inside the medium, two colors next to each other that I'm going to use. I feed my paper towel in here and it will even hold my brushes when I'm up working. Okay. And this is my palette, so left hand or right hand, okay? So, we need to, oh, we're pretty good. So now this is what I was gonna show you. I'm gonna lay this here, and I'm gonna center it on here. And I'm gonna take my sponge, and I'm gonna use just, this is a, this is, look at me, blue. Okay, is that right? Look at me blue. Okay, now I'm going to squeeze my paper towel on my sponge. And when we stencil, I'm stenciling with a sponge. So I'm going to tap. And I'm going to tap it off. Because I, I don't want a whole bunch on here. I'm just going to get a nice shape. Now you can tape this down, but I hold it with one hand. And I'm going to tap. I'm... Sometimes I make circles or just tap, and I want it, you can tell if there's water, there's still water in here. That's not good. Okay. Now, I want to round the edges a little bit darker. Okay, now we can make circles to make it get a lighter shade if we want it where there's almost no paint left on here, okay? Now this is how we're gonna do. You keep this hand here, and you can lift to see how it's looking. See how nice that shadows? And absolutely no water. Now most people that I've done stencils with are messing it up because they have water. Now on the tails and on the outer wing, I can make it darker. Okay. Now there's a multitude of stencils and I've put four different stencils on one piece before. I'm going around the country right now doing a great piece with a big beautiful butterfly and we use four stencils. We have a word stencil, a big motif of a flower, and then we have a butterfly that we're putting on and we have wood grain. So I've seen a bunch of you take those stencils and turn them into all kinds of things after I taught you, so that's exciting. So you lift it to make sure you're happy with everything, because now's the time you would put it down. Okay, so we're gonna put that out to the side, and look how great that looks. This is a piece of something, there it is. So, put that into the water so you don't mess your sponge. Now, isn't that pretty? I like the variation of color. Some, some solid, some's darker, some is light. All right, now what I want to do is I want to move it up here to work on it now so that we can see it better. And sorry, I'm going to reach and get my palette. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my design that I created right over there so I can see it easily. And the first thing I decided to do is I wanted to do a tulip. So now what I'm doing is I picked up my magenta and a little bit of white so it's two-thirds magenta, one-third yellow. I said white, I meant yellow. <laughs> okay. All right, so see, I'm picking up over here and splitting the brush, and over here I'm in one compartment. All right? Now what's going to happen here is right below, I used this spot down here as a place to do my first stroke. And then... I stroke coming down. Now one way to do this, I'm going to come over here and just dip more yellow, is I can come back up over here and put more yellow on it. So just dip yellow sometime and flatten it over here. Now we're going to come out from the bottom here and wiggle back up and then slide down. Okay, you see how I turn that just a little bit? Let's do it over here. We wiggle up 
and we're a little bit shorter of the top center and we're gonna so I lean it out then I turn it in as I come down okay all right now so we have the one in the back two on the sides now let's come up here right here and come down let's go back up see I want the yellow to really stand okay out here we're gonna wiggle watch my brush slide up out and down see now you can just restroke over those but each time I'm doing it I'm gonna come over here hopefully you can see it look at the brush there you go so what you want to do is make these curves and let's come up here a little bit higher I really want to show you that one more time up here all right so we're wiggling up stand up to the chisel lean out and then roll it in that's what we're doing on both sides. Wiggle over here, stand, I mean, lay it out, and then turn it in. So that makes a big difference, okay? So, wiggle up. See how I'm wiggling up to the point, lay it down, roll it in. All right, that's really important. Now that's what we're doing. There's leading out, then rolling it in, like ribbon. Okay, so when we do ribbon, watch this. We lay it this way, stand up to the chisel, lay it that way, stand up to the chisel, lay it this way. So that ribbon movement is what we're doing down here. And you have to keep getting fresh paint. Now see, sometimes I'm just getting fresh yellow. Dip in the yellow, all right, right here. I'm gonna come here, wiggle down, lay it out, and then roll it back up. Okay. Now, we're going to do a couple little buds, and I want those before I do the, fl um, the, do the bird. Yeah. So I want him up here. So I'm going to do him right up there. And you can see where I don't have enough paint. Go pick up a little bit more paint. Okay. And if you go a little bit slower there sometimes when you're on canvas, a little bit slower, it'll go into those divots. Okay, then I lean, oops, lean, and make a daisy there, and right here. So I still have the spot. Let me show you what happens when you do this. I've got a brush here. I'm going to wet it. This is a really good little lesson. You can take and pick up and wipe with a wet brush. Pick up and wipe. Another cute, other cool little trick. Then I can come back in and add my little flower there. Okay? Now, because even I make mistakes. <laughs> All right, so this one, you can watch mine to see. This one came right below this bird. And it's another little bud. All right, you can do two strokes or three strokes. Now we're ready for our green. So what I've done with this is I'm going to come in with a light and dark green. Isn't this fun? There's lots of different dimensions to it, which you can at any time change my look and do what you want, but it's kind of fun to learn the strokes as we go. This is a light and dark green, so I'm going to come right here with little strokes from the flower itself, and I just came down a little bit to here, but we're going to paint the butterfly so it's okay. All right, this one, and I didn't realize I was going to do that. As I was working, I decided, oh, I'll just paint this bird. Wouldn't that be cute? And then I decided, oh, you know what? I want to do this butterfly also. See that shaky? We don't want that shaky. So it's better when you're smooth, and the way to get smooth is use your little finger. See how my little finger is down here? If I think about pulling my little finger, it does a better stroke. This time I touched the flower there. And the first time I did, I didn't. So I can come back and go over that if I want to. All right, so then I decided to put some leaves. So I'm gonna put a little bit of white. So 
So I'm going to dip a little white, work that in. I hope you enjoy this. You get to do it with me and rewind me, so that makes it easy. <laughs> okay? And so we're going to have fun. I want to create a lot of different um, elements that will help you as you're learning one stroke, especially if you can't find a teacher in your area, I'm going to be here for you. So you can write me and I can introduce things that you want me to introduce or talk to you about problems that you might have um, as you're watching the video. So be sure to let me know. There you go. And these lessons are easy for everybody to get to. So many people have a problem getting to um, the lessons that they want to get to that I do. Okay. Now, let me tell you what I'm doing here. I'm doing a chisel, lay down, chisel, and stand up. See how it makes a nice point, but you got to slide till you get a point on all those. Now, what you want to do is we want to come up here, and I just did a few little branches off this way. And I tried not to get and cover all my pretty stuff. And I'm going to do one big leaf here, there, and then I'm going to go to the 12 brush. All right, so I'm going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle to the point. And I'll show you a little trick instead of doing it the other way. I'm going to turn it this way. And wiggle, 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 wiggle out to the tip. And see the goop in the middle? If you take and do your stem right in there, you can just pick it right up. Makes it easy. Okay. So let's pick up the 12 and do a couple of the little one-stroke leaves around here. So I'm going to load that 12 the same way. Right in the middle here. Now we have motorcycles outside. <laughs> Maybe y'all can't hear them. Every time I say my dog's there, y'all can, y'all say, I never heard your dog. <laughs> but when he's right there, we're thinking you do. All right. So... Push, stand up, push, stand up. Okay. Now you're going to come from the outside in, and you only want to go halfway in. So, or two-thirds into your leaf. So what I want to show you is let's look, let's look over here. Lots of people do this right here with the flat. I'm going to start here at an angle. Push, stand up. And when I pull the stem into there, I'm going to take and I'm going to lift the front edge, lift the front edge, and just bring the back of it into the leaf. And I only want it two-thirds in, okay? All right, now, let's see. The next thing I decided was I want to do some little blue flowers. So I'm still working with flowers, thinking I'm just leaving the stencils. And, you know, it's kind of funny as you're working with it, you see what you think. But... I'm gonna come right in here, and I put one third, oh, my floating medium's running. Can y'all see me working it in there? I haven't really had to use floating medium yet because I've got enough paint on here, but see, see how much white is on there? So, I decided, where am I? Right in here. I'm gonna do these little blossoms, and when they pick up the green a little bit, let me come up here. Let me show you here. We're going to do a teardrop. We're going to touch here. See the V? We're going to go up and over, up and over. And one way to do it is that we make a gingerbread man. So see the white? The white. And then we're going to overlap and do another gingerbread man. His arms and his legs. See that? So that's what we're going to do. So you can do them a little smaller if you want to. We'll put plenty of paint. You, I probably should let this dry a little bit. <laughs> but of course I don't. I'm just going to jump into it. Now that means I'm going to pick up a little bit of green. So what I did was I put a little cluster up here and I put blue, a pink on the other side. But then I came down here, all in here. So 
So you have to practice these a little bit. It's the cobalt blue and white. See how vivid it is? The ones underneath can be a little muddy, that's okay. See? I'll make sure you put plenty of paint. See, I pick up paint every petal, I mean every stro um, every flower. I'll do five petals and go get fresh paint. Okay, so this is a little cluster and I really did it kind of tight. A little bit of a hydrangea look. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back here. I might bring the blue back on now when it dries a little bit. But I also put a little pink. I was thinking, what else do I need? And I didn't put the pink until later after I got everything done. But I can put it right here. And the pink is a little bit of magenta and white. See, I put it, ugh, I did it wrong side. Okay, white on one side, and then I went over here and got a little bit of magenta. Okay. And I came out from the bird out here. Now, the thing is, is that looks more orange, but and this is definitely pink now. But I, th I still think it gave it a bright, pretty look. And what most people said, I got over 700 likes for this, and I, what they liked is how bright it was. And what I was worried about is it was too bright. <laughs> so I love to hear when you guys like something. It really makes a difference when you guys write. Makes a difference when you tell me your opinion and what you want to see. And I want to make it better for you and give you what you're looking for. Especially if there's something saying, Don, I've worked on this and worked on this and I can't get it. You know? So, and I was doing geraniums and I was just giving you the little geranium leaf. Uh, but I threw a couple buds in there and I didn't give you the whole flower. So I'm going to have to go back and do a flower for some of y'all because... You all asked for it. Now look, I'm going to take the bristles. I usually use the handle of the brush. But I'm going to take the bristles so I can do a little teeny dot. But we have daughters, little dots. It's called D-O-T-Z. And that has eight different size little dots, which are nice. Now this one again, let me see if I can put some little blue in there. I don't know how long this class is being, but I am excited about you having these classes and being able to redo them, rewind them, watch them again. You don't have to rewind on YouTube, but you can just set it and watch it again and get the parts that you're wanting to hone in on and do better. Okay, so now you can leave it just like that or you can have more, okay? So what I'm doing, and I'm gonna add the bird and the butterfly. All right, so first of all, the butterfly, I decided to do some pink down in this part. So I came down here, went there, and right down here, this is straight magenta with your number 12. So have you learned anything yet? I'd like to always find out if you're learning as we're going here. Of course, I'm not hearing you, so I hope you let me know. All right, so now let's add the blue. Now I'm using, first of all, this uh, ink spot. No, I'm not using ink spot yet. I'm using the cobalt, cobalt. And I came all the way up and filled it in. Now this is pretty solid, and y'all aren't used to me being solid. This is like in toll painting where they base coat it. But I am a little bit on the butterfly because I'm going to add some other shading to it, okay? And some yellow and some white to it. So, and the body's going to go right in here, but I'm going to use the ink spot to do that. I just want y'all to see. Now, let's go over to the bird. Now, what I did with the bird is I used cobalt and I side loaded a little bit of ink spot, the darker blue, okay? And picked up a little bit more dark blue. <laughs> All right, now just like we were doing a bird, I do the top of his head. I'm not doing the bottom because I'm going to put pink there. I'm going to do the upper part of his wing right into the flower. Okay, so it's going to be good because I'm going to come right in there. 
All right, you can let this dry, but we don't have time, so I'm just going right into it because I want to get teach you a lot in here. So now I'm going to just make chisel edge strokes with those two dark bl uh, two blues. Okay, just for the outside edge. All right, and let's go ahead and pick up some white now. So I picked up white on the other edge. And we're going to come right in here. And we're doing like a daisy stroke, little chisel edge strokes right in here with the white. I had a lot of white, so look how, long, how far I was able to go. Now, I'm going to come across here and do his back. What's really easy is you've got the whole stencil bird like a pattern. So see how easy it is just to follow that? All right. And I'm going to work the white into the, his tummy here, right across here. Now this this bottom wing is going to go, or, or front wing is going to go on top of that, so you're going to have no problem seeing that. I went ahead and put that light blue down there, so when we put the pink, it's going to cover it. All right. So I think you're going to like this. It's a real fun process, because now we're going to come right in here. It's canvas, so it's giving me a little bit of texture there. All right, now on this side, I'm going to come here and pull this blue all the way to the tip. All right, so it needs it needs more, and it needs the white. So what I did was, you're, let's see what I do here. I'm going to put a little bit of pink right in here. Just gave it a little bit of color. I just thought it'd be nice. And I also, at this point, can put a little bit. Let me wipe this off. I'm afraid I'm gonna get blue, so I'm trying to tilt it. A little bit of pink with just the corner of the brush right in here. I have to look, why is that stencil? Oh, that stencil goes in here some. I kept seeing that spot there. Okay. Now, let's wipe that off, and we're going to do blue and white again. Blue and white. Work this in. Okay. Now, you all see there's floating medium running all over the place. Well, that won't happen because you won't be tilting it to a camera, I hope. You won't have that problem. Now, I'm going to get it some more white. And we're going to do another layer right in here. Okay. Now, what I ended up doing is putting, I think this will look better. Watch this. If we put the darker blue out here and not so much white there. See, I think that helped it a little bit. Okay, now what we're going to do is come out and do the tail. Now, I'm going to come way out here and way out here and start working this dark. I'm picking up the light and the dark blue. Cobalt's the light blue, which is pretty dark. And then Ink Spot. Ink Spot reminds me of Night Sky, but there's no purple in it. So it's, it actually is a really nice color. Okay, so see how I did the same daisy strokes. Now what I wanted to show you that really helped this look is I wiped everything off and I'm grabbing some white. Okay, now these little touches like this make a big difference, but you don't have to do all this. I just like to add the touches to give you more depth and realism. Okay, so you see how this is a front wing, back wing, body. Now the beak, I took a little bit of yellow ochre. Just a little bit, or you can use the yellow and put a little bit of the pink in it, make it a little orangey looking, just for his beak, okay? And I think that made that look better. You can put a little bit of that in the butterfly down here too, but let's finish your beak. I'm gonna put a dark blue. Sometimes we put this black, but since we're just using blue, I'm gonna put an eye there and a little nostril 
And now let's put a teeny bit of white in his eye. There. So doesn't that look good? Now, now see this one's, I like the combination of it there and not there. All right, now let's pick up the yellow. And let's put yellow right in here. Now you see that? I picked up a lot of yellow, thick yellow, not inky. I laid it down. Ooh, geez Louise, sorry. I laid it down and I pull. Now I do not know why, but going backwards gave me a bad time. All right, so here. See how those little strokes? Same thing. I'm gonna, on the outside. On the outside, then smaller. I must have been putting my thumb backwards. It wasn't working. All right, now I put a little bit more white in that, but I'm just gonna come around this with white. So you can choose to add little dots, do whatever you want on your butterfly. But doesn't that start making it look really good? Now what I did was I took the ink spot, all dark blue, and I went around here on both sides, just a little bit darker. That really just added to it. And then across here, see that green's running into it. So we're just gonna go across there. Now, I like creating butterflies and making this this really rich look that they give you. All right, so then we have two little teeny antennas. Now, I'm going to roll, watch this. I'm going to roll it till it's really small, okay? So I just have just the tip, and I'm going to touch, pull, touch, pull. My hand is not working on that side. Okay, so even if you have the shakes, it works. Okay, now what I thought when this was all done... It's just missing a little something for me. <laughs> so we'll see what you think. I decided to come in and add some scrolls. So I'm using thick paint and I came here. So I push and lift. I don't like that dry look. All right, then I do have to add just a little bit of water to make it inky for a few spots. Okay, so one of them I'm right here, and I came in here. Let's do another one up here. Okay, and that's only when you're trying to do this thin line. My little finger steady in me. Oh, my whole easel's moving. There we go. All right, so. Then I decide, let's go back down here. I'm going to touch and lift. And then we'll do a little curl here. Now, I just thought that these really added to it. So I just put a few of them in different spots. Because I kind of covered some of the swirls. See, I'm going to add a little bit more over that. Because these just didn't cover the canvas well. All right, so then right over here, I wanted to come with, you know what? Guess what? You can turn your canvas. It's even I need to sometimes. You like that? People always say, I can't do that. I said, turn the canvas. They go, we can turn the canvas? Why not? I just tell you, you can't turn a wall. So if you can't do that, you're not ready to paint your wall. And they go, oh, that's not fair. There you go. Now, one, two, three. Why do I have those shakes? When I get under the hot light, I've got diabetes, and sometimes the heat makes it crazy. All right, so I don't want you to go crazy on this. I actually made mine lighter the first time, which is which is easy. Watch this. We just come right back in here and lighten it up a little bit. And when you lighten it, it gives you a shadow behind it. So, okay. 
Same thing I did down here. Put a little bit of white in. All right. So I've been thinking what's coming next. I hope you guys are. And I hope you like this. We're going to have a set of brushes that I'm going to use every time and a set of paints that you can use for multiple classes as I teach them. Now remember your classes are free. Just pick up your supplies and if you have supplies already you're set. And if you want like the stencil that we have, I have the stencil, a couple of worksheet pack, a couple of worksheets for you to work on. And just a few like in the canvas if you want to get the canvas, we have everything there. We ship it to you real quick. Try to keep the cost really low so it makes it affordable for you. And do I need more? Oh, I put a little bit up here. Right in here. See, I think that's better. We needed to get the color closer to the stencil color behind. And the only reason I felt like it needed is because I kept covering more of those. So, what do you think? Was that fun? Now, I had a good time, and I hope you did. And let's see how many people you can get to share and come watch the video with us. The more you get, the more you share, the more I'll do. Is that a deal? Okay, I'll see you next time.